welcome to JournalCast, a podcast for people who are passionate about journaling. Keep listening for more tips, tricks, and suggestions that will help you make the most out of your journaling practice. Hello, and welcome to this episode of JournalCast. Today, I wanted to answer the question, what is journaling? I thought that was a good place to start because that was the very first question that I had when I first considered journaling as a personal development tool. In the last episode, I said that I would be busting some journaling myths, and that was slightly misleading because I'm only going to be busting one journaling myth in this episode, but that is the myth that there is a right way and a wrong way to journal. Because one of the key things about journaling is that it is whatever you want it to be. It can be written journaling, it can be art journaling, it can be musical compositions, it can be drawing, it can be audio. One of my favorite journaling practices is actually recording dreams on my voice recorder on my iPod. And that's something that I'm going to go into in more detail in a future episode. But I just add that to highlight that the possibilities are limitless. The really key thing to remember is it's not about a finished product. I really want to get rid of this idea that there is a right and a wrong way to journal, or there's good journaling and bad journaling. And we spend so much time in our lives evaluating what we produce, the work that we do, who we are. Journaling is really a chance to take a step back from that and get away from that judgment and evaluation because it's not about the finished product that you create. It's more about the experience that you get from doing it. I myself have really enjoyed art journaling and I found it very cathartic and I am by no means an artist. My artistic skills are kind of a joke. I <laughs> I can just about draw a convincing stick man, but anything beyond that is pretty much guaranteed to be out of my reach but just because art is frankly not something I've never been particularly interested in it but like I said I've still gotten a huge amount out of art journaling just because with art journaling and with written journaling you know we're not creating a masterpiece to rival Van Gogh or the next zeitgeist novel or anything like that the most important thing is what we get out of it part of that comes from perhaps setting an intention before you start journaling. And if you've done any yoga or any meditation, this idea of setting an intention might be quite familiar to you. It's not something that I do all the time, personally. I don't think you have to do it necessarily, but it can be quite helpful for when you have a particular issue that you want to work through, a particular internal conflict, or you want to get in touch with a part of yourself more or something like that. So that's one thing you can do to get the most out of your journaling before you start. While you're journaling, the act of journaling itself can be incredibly cathartic. It can be really, really helpful to get all these swirling thoughts out of our head and commit them to paper and put them down there. Not for anybody else to read, just for us. And quite often, journaling acts in the same way that making a list does. So when we make a list, a shopping list, for example, um, we're going to the grocery store and we have all these things swirling around in our head and we're thinking, oh, I must remember that and I must remember that. When we get it all down in the list, there is a sense of relief of not having to remember all that anymore. And it really frees up our headspace to be able to think about other more important things. And the same thing goes for journaling. There is something really rewarding about making the internal external and turning all these thoughts and feelings that are going around in our head into um, writing or typing or art or whatever else we choose to turn them into. And one of the really great benefits of that is it really gets those thoughts out of our head. So when it's on paper, we know that we can go back to those anytime we want. We can reread them, we can remind ourselves of them, but we don't have to keep them inside. And that can be really valuable just because it allows us to get on with our day in a more productive and meaningful way. It makes space in our head for things that are more important. As well as using journaling for emotional purposes, it's also just a great way to keep a record of your life. I'm personally not in favor of showing people your journals. That's just my personal choice. I think it's a very, very private thing. And if you're writing with the idea that other people might see it in the future, you're probably going to be self-censoring. 
So I personally think journals are private, but it's still really cool to be able to look back at something that you wrote a year or two years ago, or even five years ago, and to be able to see, oh yes, I was with this person on this date and I was doing this thing and I had this experience and I remember that now. And just to remind yourself what rich experiences you've had. For me personally, that's given me a really deep appreciation of life in general. As you probably gather from what I've been saying, and as you might have experienced yourself, journaling is really good for our emotional and mental health. It's a fantastic way of expressing and exploring our internal worlds, and it's a really safe space in which we can do that. So there are some things that might be going on inside our heads that we might not feel that we have anyone that we can talk to about. It's still important to talk about those things, but what journaling allows us to do is it allows us to talk to ourselves about them, and it allows us to draw on our own wisdom, our own self-knowledge, our own self-awareness to work through our own issues. And it encourages healthy psychological habits like self-soothing and self-nurturing. That's not to say that you can't talk to people about these ideas in the future, but the point is that right now you might not feel able to, either because there's no one around that you feel like you have that kind of relationship, you, you can, or perhaps the thing that you might want to journal about is something that you feel a lot of shame about or other difficult emotions. Whatever the reason, if it's not the right time to talk to someone else about it right now, Journaling can be really, really helpful as a safe space in which to express your internal world and to begin to process some of the things that you've been thinking about. So that's a really brief overview of what journaling is. Next time, we're going to look at how to journal. Before I go, I want to provide you with a quick suggestion that I would like you to try over the next week. And this is the idea of morning pages. This goes back to something I was talking about a couple of minutes ago about getting our thoughts out of our head and onto paper so that we can get on with our day with a clear mind and our full attention on the task at hand. Morning Pages is a journaling exercise devised by Julia Cameron, who is the author and facilitator of The Artist's Way. This is a 12-week course for creatives, which is designed to help you unlock your creative potential and overcome any creative blocks that you might have. The concept of Morning Pages is that you write approximately three pages of A4. If you're using a computer, that's 750 words. And you just write, stream of consciousness. The best time to do this is the morning, just because it clears your head for the day ahead. The idea is that you just start and you don't stop until you have your three pages or your 750 words. So even if your mind is blank, which at first it probably will be, I know mine certainly was when I, when I did this for the first few times, you can write, I don't know what to write about. But the whole idea with stream of consciousness is that whatever comes into your head goes down on paper. And this exercise is really surprising because at first you might have the same experience as me and think, oh, I don't know what I'm writing, I don't know what I'm doing. And you'll have three pages filled with, I don't know what to write about, my mind is blank. Have I filled up three pages yet? I can't wait until this is over. <laughs> but the more you do it, the more you'll start to recognize other things coming up as well. And actually, what you'll find is that when you dedicate a certain amount of time and a certain number of words to your internal dialogue, it will start to speak to you. So it might take a couple of goes. It might feel really uncomfortable at first. You might be thinking, oh, there's no way I can write 750 words or three pages. I'm not used to writing that much. Trust me, you can do it. With enough practice, you can get it down to under 20 minutes a day. And I know this because I have done it. When I first started out doing it, it took me what felt like forever to do it each morning, but it is so worth setting the alarm a little bit earlier, getting up earlier and just pouring out anything that comes into your mind onto paper. So I hope you'll try that over the next week. Uh, in the artist's way, Julia suggests doing it every day. Whether you do it every day or not is up to you. Every day is ideal. I know it's not always practical, so Try and do it as much as you can. Don't let resistance get in your way. And that's something that we will be talking more about in a future podcast. I hope you enjoy that and I hope it serves you well over the next week or so. If you have any questions about journaling, any comments about this podcast or anything else, you can get in touch with me by email at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, -N -N at becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also contact me by visiting my website, www.becomingwhoyouare.net, and either leaving a comment on the blog 
or using the contact form on the page to get in touch with me. I hope you will check out my ebook, The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, which is available Kindle through Amazon and also as an audiobook on my website. It's packed with everything you need to know about journaling, including a lot of the stuff that we're covering in this podcast, as well as over a hundred prompts and suggestions that you can use to kickstart your journaling practice and take it to another level. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of JournalCast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with me by emailing hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Remember that my book, The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, is available through all major ebook retailers and as an audiobook through www.becomingwhoyouare.net. So pick up your copy and inspire your journaling practice today. See you next time. Thank you.